Hello, critics, non-critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, where we take a glance into blockbusters, indie films, and everything in between. I'm your host, Christian, and I'm joined by my good friend of the show, Amanda, a.k.a. AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Letterboxd, and Instagram. And today, we're here to give our spoiler-free thoughts and insights on that 90s show, the follow-up to the popular sitcom, That 70s Show. And before we begin today's episode, you can listen to our podcast on podcast platforms around the internet. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. And if you are a new or seasoned listener to the show, we would love to hear from you guys. Follow us on Instagram and follow us on Twitter at Film Optics, that is optics with an X, or you can email us at filmoptics at gmail.com for any movie-related questions. Amanda. This is take two for us. <laughs> the first audio, just, I don't know what happened. Like your audio file got corrupt. And I was like, okay. we got to do this for the That 70s Show fans out there. But <laughs> how was your week? How was your new year? What's new in your life? Oh, man. Um, a lot of things. A lot of things is like, it has been happening. I can't even, I can't even tell you. I have Sundance at the end of this month, which I'm prepping for. I'm currently running with a new book club, which is Maud's book club that I am a part of now. That means I have to read more, which is not my forte. Yeah! Uh, yay! I guess I read more. <laughs> so uh, that's the other thing. Uh, but yeah, I've been, you know, standard. I've been trying to watch more movies than television series right now. Um, but that 90 show was just something that I needed to talk to you about and have this awesome discussion. Um, we're huge fans. So I think that it's going to be a really great discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm right there with you for me. I I've only seen one new movie this year. Um, I feel like I'm three TV shows into the new year for 2023 already i don't know how this happened but it always happens like last year i think i watched around like maybe 30 35 shows and then i think maybe around like 60 ish movies but what (laughs) i don't know i don't know where i find this time it just give me your brain (laughs) i need to watch more television series it's like literally one of my goals for 2023 i don't know how you're not wow that's crazy Kudos to you. I can consume television easier than I can consume movies. I don't know what it is. It's the strangest thing ever. Because like when I'm watching a movie and I don't know, just whatever two and a half, three hour long movie or whatever movie it may be. And I'm like, oh man, like, you know, like how much time is left? But like (laughs) for TV, I can just like sit there and watch like maybe three, four episodes at once, depending on what it is. And I'm like, I got to know what happens next, but I don't know. I think I'm just more of of a long form uh, story person. I don't know. It's weird. Which is fair. I get that too. I think for me, it's like I wait to binge and then I don't binge. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All the episodes are out. I can binge it now. And then I just never do it, which is my downfall. So I don't know. I'm going to try my best. I really am. I really am. You have to push me. (laughs) Hold <laughs> okay. Are you watching The Last of Us when it comes out? Oh, 100. I think I'm going to do coverage on uh, my YouTube channel just because yeah. I think that's going to gain a bit more traction. But uh, yeah, that's my goal of like at least doing one television that I uh, show that I can cover every like month or two. month or something. Yeah, Man, I think- YouTube. What's that like? <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> YouTube. YouTube's a different beast, but like I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting the hang of it. I'm yeah, getting the flow of it. I'm a writer, like first off, so like that's that's the tough part is doing videos and pumping them out. That's why, like, I'm so inspired by what you do. Even like getting the vid, like the the pods out. There's you have such a great turnover and it's so quick, and you cover everything, Christian. So like, kudos to you guys because it, it drives me nuts editing and stuff like that. It oh, I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the kind words. Yeah. I mean, right back at you. I mean. I I don't write as much like I 
sometimes do, but it's it's not it's not my priority. But yeah, I'm nothing but respect for people who can just <laughs> sit there and it's like, oh my gosh, I had to write this down, and I'm like, great. <laughs> <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> Words are very hard, Words and we use hard. them every day, and it gets tougher and tougher as the years go on. <laughs> Because I just lose the ability to learn how to like communicate with people. Someone's like, hi. And I'm like, uh, uh, blah. like <laughs> just something really just weird. Just noises at that point. And it's like, is that person uh, talking to me? What do I do? What do I say? And it's like, <laughs> I feel but, oh man. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of TV. I, I got to get on the movie. There's a lot of other movies I haven't seen. And the Godfather is one of them, but we'll get to it. I bought the 4K set. Yay! It's sitting on my shelf. I just have to watch it. Okay, when um, you watch it, I'll do it again. And then we can review it. <laughs> really quick. Because yeah. it came with, before we get into that 90s show, <laughs> it came with Godfather Part 1, Part 2. Yeah. And then there's Godfather Coda. And then there's yes. Godfather Part 3. Okay, so Godfather Part 3 and Godfather Coda are the same, so it's technically still Part 3, but Godfather Coda is a re-edited version of what Part 3 was supposed to be, and that was released, I think, two years ago? Okay, so that's what I thought. It's I like the complete sure. version, like director's cut type of version of what Part oh. 3 was supposed to be, but everyone kind of hates Part 3. That's I'm not going to get into the the whole so, so watch coda <laughs> instead of part three or <laughs> i would watch part three just to get like the full trilogy aspect of it and then okay. i would watch coda to kind of familiarize yourself with it because then i don't think you'll notice the difference as much in storytelling fair enough yeah. yeah yeah i got you okay good to know good to know all right with all that out of the way ladies and well all the housekeeping that we just get <laughs> out of the way Oh, Amanda, are you ready to get into this this review of that 90s show? Again, this is spoiler free yes. for everyone out there. We're not going to be getting no. into spoilers. I want people to be surprised um, by just everything that happens in the show. It's something you can easily binge because that's what Netflix loves to do. Um, but with all that said, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after this introduction to that 90s show. Okay, kids, the basement is all yours. Lights on, shirts on, and no dancing. No dancing. You're like the guy from Footloose. <laughs> no dancing, you guys. They go in my room. My foot goes in their ass. You sweet man. I think we should just say, whoa. <laughs> Get out. See you soon. Get out. Don't be a stranger. Get out. Extra icing. That was mine. We never locked the sliding door. We do now. Hello, Wisconsin! And we are back. You just heard a little snippet of the trailer from that 90s show, which is dropping on January 19th, a.k.a. by the time you're listening to this, the show will be out. So definitely go watch it on Netflix. All 10 episodes will be there. They're about maybe 25 minutes long, which is like the perfect time to just binge a fun new sitcom. And the story of that 90s show is as follows. Now it is 1995 and Leia Foreman is visiting her grandparents for the summer where she bonds with a new generation of Point Place, Wisconsin kids under the watchful eye of Kitty and the stern glare of Red Foreman. And the creators of this show include Greg Mettler and Bonnie Turner and Lindsay Turner coming to return. I believe that Lindsay is the daughter of Bonnie, who Bonnie is one of the original creators of that 70s show. Um, I don't know if Greg Mettler was or not. I wasn't able to look that up in time, but... There was another Turner. I think Bonnie's husband yes. was also a part yeah. of that 70s show. Yeah, I think I okay. remember that too. Okay. And uh, this show stars Deborah Jo Rupp, Kurt Wood Smith, and Callie Haverda, who plays Leia Foreman, which is <laughs> I I love how uh, it's it's perfect. It's so I mean, sitcoms are like outlandish. 
and funny and half the time they make no sense. And it's like, of course, Eric's daughter will be named Leia. And I thought he was going to have like twins like Luke and Leia, but I'm like, <laughs> I, I feel like Donna said, yeah, like that's like a one and done <laughs> type yeah. in there. But let's get into our initial reactions. Actually, before we get into that, I do apologize. We're going to get into our introduction of that 70s show again. This is like our try number two because the first time that we recorded this yeah. it just all went to it, it all went to poop unfortunately. <laughs> but we're going to get into our introduction of that 70s show which you know that's the reason why we are covering that 90s show here today then we're going to get into our initial reactions of the show that is our spoiler free section then we're going to get into a little bit of 90s show trivia for that 90s show then our final thoughts in our ratings and then it's time to skedaddle on out of here. So I'm going to pass it over to Amanda so she can tell us about her introduction to that 70s show. Yeah, well, I was very little, okay? I was probably eight or nine, and my uncle would be watching it. It wasn't, like, live, like, on television. It was probably, like, the day after it would air. It originally aired, stuff like that. So it was, like, a bonding experience for, like, my uncle and I because he'd be watching me, and then we'd watch that 70s show. Um, I shouldn't have been watching it at the age that I was watching it. So that was fun because jokes went over my head. It was low-key inappropriate, but these characters were just everything for me, and I really appreciate their, like, their, like, slapstick comedy. I think that, like, their physicality, especially Ashton Kutcher in Wilmer Valderrama, like, their physical comedy was fantastic. Even Topher Grace, I can add into that mix. Um, so they were really fun. And then growing up, I, I kind of didn't watch it. And then when, when it was on Netflix again, I'm like, you know what? I've never watched a series straight through. Um, so I binge watched it during exam season in university as one does when you're studying just, you know, to watch something. And, um, I finished all, all the seasons in the span of two weeks because I just loved it. And then Donna Pinciotti became my, you know, my entire personality because I love her so much. Um, but these characters stick. It's one of those sitcoms that just sticks because the humor is relevant. You're focusing on an era that, you know, we like the nineties babies don't really know of, you know, so it was just something different. And these characters were so wonderful. I learned so many lessons from them as like as an adolescent and which is so amazing. And they had great chemistry but for me, what sticks out among every single sitcom is the type of humor that's presented. And that 70s show is so different. It's not like to the point where they're so like they're so crude with each other. It's just like perfect one-liners and jabs that can only hit if you know the characters through and through. So that 70s show is just, it has my heart. It's a very underappreciated show. Very unappreciated. I agree. It, it's for me when it comes to my introduction. I, I watched. I started watching it with my cousin. I would visit him in Louisville, Kentucky, and it was just something that he had on. And I was. I grew up on sitcoms. You know, you had iCarly, you had Drake and Josh. Um, you know, you had Full House. You had. First Prince of Bel Air, all the the Nick and Night reruns and whatnot for all those old school um, sitcoms. Because I mean, for a very long time, you know the the uh, laugh track sitcom was just you know the place t where good television lived until you know it the sitcom genre has evolved since then. But for that '70s show, it was just something I was just attached to, and I we would just watch it every single day. I stayed down in uh, Louisville, Kentucky for about like a good month. And it just quickly became like one of my favorite shows ever. And then I was so obsessed with it. I bought like the DVDs when I started like working and then I lost the DVDs, but what? I have since oh bought the Blu-ray during Black Friday this year okay, for $20 fair. for the entire season. It was so like lucky. some crazy lightning deal for that 70s show. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I have to buy this. Like I've been meaning to, you know, have this part of my collection because it is one of my favorite shows of all time. And it's just, it's something that I felt like I absolutely needed to have. But I'm very surprised that Netflix hasn't put that 70s show back on 
Netflix. I'm not sure what the whole, you know. What? Yeah, I don't think it's Is it on not there. there? It, it was for a very long time, then they took it off. It's it seems that Netflix has always had like a big sitcom on Netflix for a long time. They they replaced it with something else for so for a while the office was on there. Yeah. Uh, New Girl's still on there, but for a while the, the office was on there. And then How I Met Your Mother was on there. Those soon got replaced. Then Friends came to Netflix. That soon got replaced. And now uh, that 70s show was on Netflix for a very long time. But now it's Seinfeld's like the big. I mean, it could be different for you because you're, you're in Canada. No, it's on Peacock. It's on P- oh, oh, oh. I, that means I'll never be able to see it at all. Really? That's oh, so is annoying. it not available in, in Canada? That no? and Roku. <laughs> Cannot get it in Canada. <laughs> Technically, you're closer to Wisconsin than I am. <laughs> well, that's not fair. I'm going to email them and be like, listen, fam. Like, can I change my now. VPN and pretend that yeah. I'm American? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> that's hilarious. Mm. But no. Oh, wow. Peacock. Eh, not, it's not, the not the choice I would use it for. But hey, I mean, Peacock's got to get the views somehow, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, for my introduction, it's it was just I fell in love with these characters. I just thought it was hilarious, and I mean, I I know a lot of people think that like laugh track um, sitcoms are just you know the worst, but or not the worst, but they're just not as funny. And like I I love the goofy humor. I love the slapstick comedy. You know, the one liners like you had mentioned, Amanda, and I'm, it's it was so like I think. I mean, Hyde was definitely one of my favorites, but like there's just something about Eric where he was just such a smart mouth. He was. And I was, it's just, oh my gosh, it was the worst. I'm like, if I ever talk to my parents that way, right. it was not going to end well. But Topher Grace, <laughs> holy Lord, he that it. man, he's phenomenal. Yeah. Like, like his banter with Kurtwood Smith, I'm like, that just makes the entire series. They were so good oh, together. Yeah. It, there, there's so many it's it's like that 70s show reminds me of spongebob where there's so many like <laughs> situational like one-liners like specific episodes where it's like there's all these great moments yeah and they just or if, you know of course when michael's saying um well no when jackie's saying oh michael i'm cold or <laughs> jackie i er- can't control the weather it's like- <laughs> eric's like oh here donna take my yeah. jacket aren't we just the perfect couple <laughs> So and it's funny. it's great. Kelso, it's, my God. Uh as in Good old Ashton. I think he is honestly uh America's sweetheart. I think it's as Aww. if there's any celebrity out there, I think it's as in the, the man is fantastic. And of course, him him, Mila Kunis being married after all after all these years, it's it's great. Yeah, that was fate, I think, especially because she was so. like she was so young on the show, mm. which like we'll talk about later but um, yeah yeah, like (laughs) um but yeah i just the fact that they reunited afterwards was just the sweetest thing i'm like this is love don't ever break up i'll get mad at you like the other couple exactly like (laughs) this is the this is the couple that everyone should be you know fighting for this is the um the lily and eric not no lily and marshall of the real life you know the aspiring dolls yeah. That people should be looking forward to or aiming for yeah. in their relationships. <laughs> <It's true>. But <laughs> but yeah, that's just a little bit of my introduction for that 70s show. Uh, it was just a great show. So let's actually get into our initial reactions for that 90s show, the real reason why we're here. So I'm going to pass it back over to Amanda so she can give her first initial reactions to that 90s show. I was really surprised. I was pleasantly surprised with what they gave us. I think it took me, I I did say like three episodes, as per usual, that's like standard Netflix stuff where like you're binge watching something, it takes three episodes to kind of get into it. That's the model. Um, But the characters really grow on you, you know? And the one thing, as I said, that that 70s show had that was so unique about it was that it was so different in humor than, you know, the rest of the sitcoms out there. And they applied it perfectly with the 90s humor at the same time which was absolutely wild to me so they still have that level of like sarcasm that dry sarcasm is something that 
I look for in comedy um, because it's my favorite thing in the world. And they all nailed it. These kids, these new kids that came on the block, like they nailed it too. And they have a great chemistry and banter with each other. Um, I think that Leia Foreman, played by Callie Haverda, is a little star, to be honest, because for her to perfectly combine Donna and Eric, that takes a lot because these are iconic characters. And then you're looking at her, it's like, holy sh- she sounds exactly like Eric, but like she's as fierce as Donna. And like, that's an amazing combination if you really look at it. So the kids are great. The banter is great. Uh, my personal thing is that when we, when, um, you know, Eric and Donna obviously drop off um, Callie and they go visit them, it's the fact that their parents now, and like, it's just the generational conversations that are had. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it is just absolutely hilarious, hilarious to see what happens in that first episode. It was written to perfection. Um, but yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. I want a season two. This show is really fun. Do not be alarmed that it's dropping on a Thursday. Do not be alarmed that it's a sequel show to its, an original series that people loved. It is just a lot of fun and it captures the 90s, which is the important part. I could not have said it better myself. <laughs> when when it comes to, yeah, I mean, it's, I've watched the first episode twice and I agree. It's, it's, it's a perfect like intro episode. You know, it's it's all about, you know, the the sequel series or franchises when it comes to especially the sitcoms. Um, you you we see so many of these happening. Like Netflix has gone leagues and beyond with Fuller House, which is the sequel to Full House. And I at first I was like, I mean, is anyone really gonna, you know, watch this? I'm like, well, it's like five, six seasons deep. I think they actually completed everything, you know, but it um, that, that one was okay for me. I like, I was attached to full house, but not as much as I was to other sitcoms. Like if it was on, be like, okay, yeah, I'll watch, I'll watch uh, full house. But of course we've had girl meets world from, which is a sequel for boy meets world that was on Disney. We see things like Carly coming back for that revival. And for that 90 show, I feel like it has uh, captured what made that 70 show so special. And, you know, obviously modernized it um for you know 90s kids and for us who uh, grew up in the 90s um or at least born in the 90s um all together but i agree about uh leah foreman for cali haverna she it's that is like if, if they were ever a real family like that is eric's yeah. child <laughs> that is donna's child she has the wit of donna she has a smart mouth of Eric and it's it's a perfect blend. I was very surprised how spot on she was able to, you know, portray their own child because we towards the end of that 70s show we kind of get a, you know, Eric comes back from Africa. We don't get a finality of if they, you know, work for Eric and Donna if they um end up together, but I was like, "Oh yeah, so obviously they do, but it Overall, like like you said, the kids in the show are very infectious and they really grow on you. They they feel like their own cast. They don't necessarily feel like they are trying to like, oh, well, that's the new Fez. That's the new Jackie. You know, that's the yeah. new Kelso. Um, but it's give or take a few things. But obviously, you know, these characters from the original growing up, some of them get married, some of them have kids. So it's, you know, natural. But these this new set of children, they, they really just take these characters and run with it because they're not trying to recreate the past. That 90 show is not trying to do that. And I feel like there are other sequels uh, series out there. I feel like full house kind of fell into that where it's like, Oh, you know, um, um, well, obviously Michelle wasn't there for full house, but you know, you, you had um, DJ say, Oh, my Lanta. And like so many times I'm like, we get it. Yeah. It's part of her character, but like, yeah. let's, but you know, it, you know, but Fuller House was still more so about, you know, the, the girls when it came to Kimmy, when it came to Stephanie yeah. and when it came to uh, DJ, but for that 70s show, it really just kind of pushes, you know, like, Hey, like we're going to do our own thing while 
having some of the legacy characters like Kitty and Red, who I think were perfect because, you know, we don't really venture outside of Point Place because, you know, uh, Leia is staying with her grandparents for the summer. So yeah. they kind of just run with it that way. And you could just see how, I mean, Deborah Jar Rub is like, I, <laughs> every time she does her laugh and it just like, you know, her, her iconic Kitty laugh, like she does it a few times, not as much. In this series, from what I remember, I think she did maybe like once or twice, but it's so great to see these actors come back because it shows how much they cared about the original and the fact that they're coming back and like, hey, this works. You know, it may not be as popular as that 70s show. You know, this is a new show, but this is there there is something here, there is a story to tell. And I think they did a, a phenomenal job with it. It's just so fun. It's so fun. And like, even with Red and Kitty to have them like in the series quite heavily, like they're, it's not like they're gone. Like they're there. They're in the mix every single episode. And without them, that 70s show wouldn't have worked. Like Mm -mm. without them, like it wouldn't have worked. That's why they had to be that, um, that prominent and present in that 90s show. And I think like, it just, it was awesome. Cause like the tagline is like, like I think it was like decades change, but teenagers don't. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm right. <laughs> we don't change. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's the yeah. same stuff. And it's just so funny to see like history repeat itself in certain instances. And the fact that she's a woman, like she's a girl, she's a young teenage girl. She's going to be going through different things than Eric did. So obviously Red and Kitty mm-hmm. didn't really have to deal with that either. So, you know, the, there's well, one episode yeah, yeah, anyways, like, a little bit yeah. Yeah, it's but, the situation was a special case <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it was fun like I, I completely agree with everything you said this one just stands on its own it's not it doesn't make that many references if anything they reference like little things throughout that are integrated so nicely and just add to the 90s show itself yeah yeah that, that that is very true it's I, and i agree when it comes to kitty and red like without them the show really doesn't work like obviously even in that 70s show like yeah the kids were great but like everyone's chemistry was you know bouncing off of each other like there's so many great scenes that each of the original cast share with red and kitty and even mr pinciotti so it's like my gosh, they they were able to pull it off. And I was very, I was thoroughly surprised. And I know you had started watching it before me and you're like, oh my gosh, like the Christian, you're going to love it. I was like, I don't know. Like <laughs> at first I was like, is this just another hokey like sitcom sequel? And you're like, no, it, I think you're really going to like it. And you yeah. were right. Yay. Oh my God. <laughs> we're clipping that. We're going to mark the date down. I was right. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I was right. <laughs> For once, let, let, let's not get ahead of ourselves oh, too on, much. Once, <laughs> once. all right, just just one time. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you this line. It's it's fine. Yay, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> um, but let's get into a little bit of the that '90s show trivia. So um, the first thing I kind of wanted to cover, and this is kind of a gimme from the trailer already. If you've already seen the trailer, uh, it has been announced that Topher Grace, uh, Laura Preprin. Mila Kunis, Ashton Kutcher, and Wilmer Valderrama will be reprising their roles for that 70s show. Um, unfortunately, Dan- Danny Masterson, who played Hyde in that 70s show, will not be making an appearance in the series uh, due to other things that we will not get into. Uh, he's just, he, he's in a bit of a deep doo doo all, all together. So, unfortunately, no Danny Masterson, no Hyde as well. But um, also, um, in one of the um, previous interviews for Tanya Roberts, who played Donna's uh, mother on the original series, she stated that she would be willing to make an appearance um, in the sequel series for that 90s show. But sadly, she had passed away um, early last year in 20, no, two, two years now. It was two years, yeah. Yeah, 2021, uh, eight, mo- eight months before the revival was announced but it was so sad yeah yeah and i i kind of remember that it was so much so many things are happening between you know 2020 2021 so it's 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 definitely a great loss but may she rest in peace Mm -hmm. 
But um, as we already kind of already noticed from the next piece of trivia, that Leia Foreman is named after Princess Leia, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is Eric's, you know, he is... And it's, this isn't the only Star Wars reference in Eric's life today for that <laughs> 90s show. I'm not going to say what it is because it is the most ridiculous thing in the world. But again, it is a sitcom oh, so and great. it is so perfect. I don't know what Donna said that she did. I can't remember. I, mean, I can't did even she? remember. She, maybe not. I don't think she I said. don't know. <laughs> Was it like marketing or something maybe? Shh. Advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Also, you have to watch it, guys. That means you have to watch it and tell us. Yeah, yeah. Tweet at us at Film Optics. Yeah. That is Optics for the next. Let us know because I cannot remember if Donna said uh, her occupation or yeah. not. But this next trivia fact is going to make us feel very old, Amanda. No. Um, Don't read it. <laughs> none Skip of these. It. Skip it. <laughs> we can't. It's the most interesting fact on here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, no slight to IMDb. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> so um, all the teenagers um, in the show, the, the six the six teenagers, um, they are actually teenagers themselves, which is really, really nice. But None of the six new central actors were born when the original series first premiered in 1998 and their birth years ranged between like 2004 to 2008. No. Um, it looks like Callie uh, Herverta and Ren Doi uh, were both born after the series entire run. Everyone else was kind of born in between. Which is crazy oh to think God. about. Yeah. Oh my like, God. Well, I hope they watched it. <laughs> none of them were born when it first premiered, which oh is really my crazy. God. Yeah. I don't know if they watched it or not, because I know that's like depending, like, especially for like The Last of Us or Billy Ramsey. She didn't play The Last of Us Fair. beforehand. I yeah. don't know if they did or not. I'm, I'm assuming that they had seen it. I mean, these these are certain, these are some youngins, like for sure. They are. These are some youngins. It, but they it nailed is, it. <laughs> it's insane. But I, yeah. I do appreciate how they're actually, you know, teenagers. Um, Same. They will all be in their teens when the series premieres on Netflix, which is good. And actually, the original six cast from that nine, or excuse me, that 70s show, only half of them were teens when that 70s show first premiered and that mm -hmm. is mila kunis laura preparin and wilmer velderama freaking mila kunis was 14 man i still can't she lied about her age and she got to kiss her first kiss was ashton kutcher do you understand like what an accomplishment <laughs> woman bad but also like oh my god <laughs> it's <No>. it's almost <laughs> it's it's so Man, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, Hollywood was just so different back then. But yeah. I was afraid about this because, you know, for a while they've been talking about this. And I was like, well, would that 70s show work today? And I was like, probably not. No way in hell no would way. that show work today. But no that 70s show, it works. But obviously that, that 90s show is raunchy. But that 70s show is yeah. like way raunchier. But it it's, is. It, it came out during a different time. I also think that the 90s was obviously more progressive and contained, I think. And then the 70s was like Flower Child. It was like they were doing some shiznit in the 70s, okay? They were all over the place. I think that's why there was like so much freedom and like possibilities with the show in itself with that 70s show, which is something that other sitcoms, they obviously weren't doing in 98. Mm. Mm, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you're right there. Yeah, it, it does seem like the '90s were a little bit more tamed because, you know, you, you have people who are just now, you know, especially you know, being a feminist and like the '70s was kind of like weird, but now you know, in the '90s it was way more accepted, yeah. and especially with like people's sexuality and whatnot, it, it is a more accepting time mm -hmm. but this next piece of trivia i think you'll be excited for this i didn't know this Ooh. so it is currently stated that if the series is to be picked up for another season <gasps> it will be set um the next 
summer of oh, Leia's okay. adventures. Yeah. Oh, that's not, fun. Yeah. 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 And not continue in like 1995. So it would actually be like a full year later. I like that. I like that. Cause I like even with, sorry, with like high school um, shows, they tend to like, I remember gossip girl when they did it, it was always like, obviously the school season and they never ever did the summer. So I like that this is kind of like flipped over or like they'll do like the, the end of the summer for gossip girl. They never, ever did like the full summer with them. It was always the school year. Riverdale's the same thing. You barely get like, um, the summer. Um, but I like that. Was Degrassi the same way? Degrassi was school year too. Yeah, yeah. I think it was school year only. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I like how they're doing it this way though, yeah. because I mean, obviously yeah, a lot happens during the summer, but that's really only like maybe three, four months depending, but a lot happens during the school year. And since, yeah. you know, the season one does take place during the summer of 1995 for that 90 show, it'd be interesting to have them just keep coming back. Like, within summers and summers because that's where all the i feel like that's where yeah it's kind of like the catch-up period almost but uh for the last piece of trivia here uh that 70s show co-creator terry turner actually cried on set during an episode of taping he felt very emotional to experience to return after men of after the many years of that 70s show it's and so much love has been put into this to be fair there's one episode where I just started tearing up because I, did too. I, I feel I did. like it's the same. I feel like it's the same episode. I don't want to spoil, but like there was a, there was, yeah. I'm like, there was a, re- there was a reveal and I was like screaming and clapping. And then it was just like, I started crying instantly. Cause I'm like, Holy shit. Like these characters mean so much to us, you know, which is crazy. So it's like, it's nuts just to see them in the same environment. Even like when they first said their lines in the first episode and you had the crowd, like it's a lot, it is a live audience. It's not like, it's not a laugh box. Right. So to, to even hear a live audience now, like it just feels so different than what we're used to. Like I miss the live audience. I do too. You know? So it was just, it felt like going home. I said that in my own review and it's like, you know what? It, we're going home to Wisconsin to point place. And it's just comfort. So it's like your new comfort show for sure. Oh, absolutely. I've been watching Seinfeld on like repeat for months since it came. It's just something to put on, you know, it's, it's something about situational comedies or just sitcoms in general, whether it be, you know, the live track or with the live audience with the live audience, it just, it feels so real, but there's something about like sitcoms that just, they just feel like home and you know, it's something you can always just, keep you know returning back to you know whether it's just hey i need something to you know pass the time you know while i'm cooking let me put on that 70s show let me put on that 90s show let me put on how i met your mother friends uh fresh prince of bel-air all that stuff and it's like it's it's great stuff I, i absolutely love it and it's it's fantastic like this has been a wild ride and also really quick before we move on to our next segment um, before we wrap up here for initial reactions and final thought, or not initial reactions, sorry, final thoughts and ratings. My gosh, it's been <laughs> yeah. a long day. Um, I, I enjoy how the new kids just have very easy to learn names. Like there's Nate, there's Gwen, there's yeah. Leia, there's Ozzy, there's Jay and Nikki. So it's like, you know, those are the six kids. Like they, there aren't like these super... I don't know. Sometimes I I feel like either the names are too basic, but like these are very, these are like very 90s names to me. I feel like very, like, I mean, especially with Leia, it's like, my gosh, (laughs) Eric's going to have another kid. His his name's going to be Anakin. I swear. (laughs) Poor Ben. (laughs) Poor Ben. Yeah. Let's do Ben. Let's, let's go with Ben. Yeah. I I think Ben would be more. Yeah. Because I mean, imagine Anakin. For it's, no, that doesn't really work. Leia works. Annie now, could it, work. Annie could work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Then you would be the only one that knows that it's like it's Anakin. Well, think. Well, um, Donna calls her Lele instead of that's Leia. That's right. So yeah, that's I like cute, that too. Yeah, it's a cute little nickname. I yeah, like some movie names do work. <laughs> they do. 
But again, this is for TV, so <laughs> I don't know. Also true. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure how other people feel. Let us know. That would be really interesting. <laughs> At Film Optics with an X on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really interesting because sometimes you look up like baby names or like, I don't know, I see the names of like some of my friends who are like married and, um, you know, in that stage of their life. And it's like, what did you name your child? <laughs> like, so why did you name your child that? And it's like, what did you name your child? Why did you name it that? Oh, that's yeah. a nice name. And it's like, oh, it's you like, want that there, name? Is there meaning to it? Like... <laughs> is it from a movie like this is what we do now because <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna ask. honestly like we're all gonna grow up everyone's gonna have something uh reference <laughs> whether it be like a, a pet or like a yeah. cat a dog a goldfish whatever <laughs> well if i ever get a dog not to sidetrack but like i want to get a pug you know the one from kingsman and name him eggsy but not JB, but like name him Eggsy because I I love I love Taron Egerton in that movie. So that was like that's like my dream. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. My friend's dog's name is Alistair from Alistair Mooney from Ooh. Harry Potter. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's different really nice too. Though. Out of all the names mm. to choose from, like it wouldn't be Severus, but like it's Alistair. <laughs> It's it is a really nice name for a dog. I was like, wow, that actually does work. And you know, does he have like a bow tie? Is he like proper Englishman type of situation? No. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause He's, laughs> I forgot what kind of dog he is. He's kind of scruffy, but not really. But he he's kind of a scaredy cat dog. Oh, oh my god. But, At little Alistair. Okay. He's he's, he's like a mid-size, uh, maybe like an Australian Shepherd-esque. Okay. He has like brown and black fur, but it Aww. it works. Yeah. <laughs> so we're also going to sponsor the dog shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of dog, well, I can't say anything for the show, but oh, um, yeah. 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 <laughs> I was like, oh, that was so sad. And mm. there, there's a lot of references to other characters that don't actually appear in the show for that 90s show but there's a lot of great surprises in there as well <laughs> so, so i'm just great. gonna leave it <laughs> it's so wonderful it's it's i'm so giddy just talking about it but let's move on to our final thoughts and ratings here so we can skedaddle on out of here amanda what are your final thoughts and ratings for that 90s show this is a very easy binge it's really entertaining um and it's a lot of fun it's very funny like it is one of the funniest shows on Netflix. And um, if you are accustomed to that 70s show humor, you're going to really appreciate it. If you're coming in blind and you've never watched that 70s show, be prepared to want to binge watch that 70s show after you watch that 90s show to kind of understand it. I do think that the new generation is going to appreciate that 90s show because they may not have lived through like our decade, you know, and that's oh my god! I hate that I just said that. Oh, they, like, I hate that I just said that. But it's like they, wow, the seventies or thirty years ago. No, no, no it's not. <laughs> but, it's um, like what? <laughs> but it's it's a new introduction, um, and I think that the more people uh, that watch that '90s show will just gain a new appreciation for this type of comedy, um, and I think that's really important. I think sitcoms are really important, and we're kind of missing that because everything's pre-recorded now there's no live studio audience um and i know that unless you're wandavision unless you're wandavision kudos to them because that took a lot with the content that they had to put out there with um with that script so i commend them for a live studio audience um i love that netflix did this i really do i'm very happy with it i recommend it i'm giving it an eight out of ten um i'm just pleasantly surprised and the fact that I cried, I teared up means that these characters have longevity, um, that we connected with them emotionally and they invited us into their home at Point Place. So I think that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely ends on a massive cliffhanger too, which is actually, it rubs you in. I was like, man, I just, I just want more like right Why away. Why isn't there another episode Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> I need Netflix to start giving me seasons to binge like, all at once. <laughs> no, don't do that. Cause then the show will never come out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is very true. Like my, Sorry. it's, 
<laughs> no, but like I, I do echo a lot of your a lot of your things when it comes for you know final thoughts and ratings. I've definitely give us um, an eighty out of a hundred uh, for sure. I guess that would be like four out of five on serialized. I've been trying to use that more. And I like it a lot. Serialized is it's different because you know you have to. Uh, it's different. We'll talk about it later. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for uh, for my final thoughts, like it it really is just it, it is probably the best sequel series that I've experienced thus far um, because, you know, the heart and soul of that 70s show is still there. You know, you have these new characters that are trying to do their, do their own thing. They're not necessarily trying to harp on the past. Like, obviously, you're going to have references throwing thrown in here or there but it's not like it's just bombarding you like hey remember this in that 70s show remember this in that 70s show like it it doesn't feel like they're suffocating you with references for that 70s show it is trying to be its own thing i think you know the six new kids are great uh cali haverda is probably my favorite new character on the show next to ozzy i think ozzy's pretty awesome too he's Ozzy's. his one-liners are very yeah Oh my God, the shade that that man throws, throws is just everywhere. Eager. It's amazing. It's actually amazing. I love it. Sorry, to, not to cut you off, but like Ozzy's no, no, just you're, so good. <laughs> no, no, you're you're totally fine. So make sure it doesn't happen again. I'm just joking, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ta- I'm taking back my I'm right. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I cry. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it is, it's, it's something special. I really hope that it gets a season two. I think people should watch this. Like Amanda said, it is a very easy binge. Um, it, you know, it, it's just something that I hope that doesn't get overlooked at Netflix because they do pump out a lot of stuff. And unfortunately they have been, uh, nuking a lot of, uh, shows, uh, that usually don't make it past one season. Nuts. And I hope that, that 90 show is able to stretch its legs and give us give us like a good like th- four five six seasons of this because it would be really cool you know like these kids are around 14 15 years old and it is it's like the per- it's a sweet spot you know like obviously when it comes to child actors they grow up so fast we see that with like stranger things and it's like my gosh like even with harry potter it's like in my head they're still, you know, know. 15, 14, 13 little years old, ones. but yeah, little ones for sure. <laughs> but I mean, job well done by Netflix. Definitely go watch this. It is now streaming as of this recording on January 19th on Netflix, 10 episodes each or 10 episodes total each. around 20. I know <laughs> 10 episodes each. There's episode. four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> but like they're trying to new, you know, they're Netflix is out of tra- like we're gonna give you multiple seasons at once, so you can just binge an entire series instead of an <laughs> entire season. God. That would be overload. Um, please don't do that, Netflix. But thank you to <laughs> Netflix for sending us screeners so that yeah. we can watch this early, so Thanks, that we can guys. get this out to the public. It's all the amazing that 70 show fans out there. So, with all that said, I'm gonna pass it back over to Amanda where she can tell us where it's coming up on her channel, what's going on in her life. Yeah. Oh my God. This was so much fun, Christian. I'm so happy we have this discussion. Um, I also have my, uh, that 90s show review dropping the exact same day. Um, on the 19th, I'm going to be covering Sundance, which is going to take up literally 10 days of my life. I have five movies to watch each day. Um, Oh yeah. I love it though. And I'm just so Ah, blessed that I'm like accredited again this year. Um, but I am doing it from home. I'm not going to, uh, Park City, Utah. Just, um, yeah, I have Sundance coming up and, um, you guys can keep it locked on my website, which is candidxcinema.com. Um, and then obviously my Twitter, Instagram and letterboxd, which is at AMXND reviews. Uh, so yeah, just follow me there. Award season, we're in it. We are in it. Oh, I know Christian yes. hates it, but we are I don't in hate it. it. It's <laughs> just not my favorite time of year when everyone starts. It's it's, it's when Twitter gets a little too disastrous. It's for true. Me. It's yeah. true, but I'm I mean, braving I just, I just it. want this film to pass. <laughs> I, I feel you. I do. I mean, like the Critics' Choice Awards are on Sunday. 
Um, so I'm going to be covering this that. Sunday. It's this Sunday. Well, and I got then, The Last of Us to watch. On that's this what Sunday. I was just about to say. So I'm and gonna I got pop football in. to watch. <laughs> you see, that's so much. You can't do it. Just follow along on Twitter. Um, but yeah, like like you said, Christian, we're both going to be covering The Last of Us. Um, so that's at 9 p.m. Eastern this Sunday on HBO, which I am very excited for. I've never played... Oh, that's a lie. I've played the games, but I suck at them. So I stopped and now I'm going I in. Mean, no, no. I sucked at it. I sucked at it. I'm just like, part I'm so one frustrated. Or part, two. part one. I couldn't even get oh through it. My I know it's beautiful. Right, this episode's over. No, no it's kidding. beautiful. But I just, you know what? I said, forget it. It's fine. But I'm going to Pop that man on easy. Pop that game I on did. easy. And it just. It was on easy. Oh, Christian, it was oh, on man, easy. Yeah. Do you understand how sad this is? I couldn't even get through it's shit. Not- it was so bad. Those creatures are annoying. Okay, but I'm happy I'm going in blind because I know how emotional the story is. So I'm, oh, like, I'm ready to cry all over again. Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm going in blind, doing some reactions, but I'm excited to see your coverage too for The Last of Us. So it's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm I'm very you know I've I've been a big fan of the games. I'm I'm nervous, but I'm excited at the same time. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. But. Uh, with all that says, thank you so much, Amanda, for coming on. This has been a lot of fun. It's been a while since you've been on the show. It's we we get so busy, and it's like uh, you know, know. We, we watch Avatar like what nine times, and we come out of Pandora, and we're just like, uh, I want to go back in the tent. <laughs> you do. You. I've only do. seen it twice. Correction. I've only seen it twice. You want to go back and watch it uh, ten times? Oh, Not no. me. Uh, Not I. No, it's fine. <laughs> It was, it was I don't, those those graphics, those VFX. It just mesmerized me. It's beautiful. I was story's like, just no bueno. It's yeah, it's it's a very simple story. I I think I appreciate that about it, but just yeah. because of how long it is, I'm like, Fair. this has got to be a simple story. But it is what it is. You know, yeah. I'm maybe one day I'll I want to watch it at home to see how it feels. That's yeah, do. so do I. Actually, I want to I want to give it another go. The 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 nine three D version. <laughs> HFR. <laughs> but um that is a wrap for today, everyone on the podcast. If you like what you heard on today's episode, please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform of choice. And make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Film Optics to stay in the know and make sure to share an episode of our podcast with a friend, whether it be your mother, your brother, or your significant other. Make sure to share an episode of the Film Optics Podcast with the movie lover in need. And really quick, what's coming up on our show slash what is out right now. Um, as of this recording, our Megan review is out for people to listen to on podcast platforms around the internet, including our Puss in Boots Last Wish review. Also, by the time this is out, I think both of our... Uh, reviews for the last of us uh episode one will be out because this is out on the 19th so definitely go check both of our reviews out there i'll link amanda's and the show notes down below um of this podcast episode of course you know we're going to be covering the last of us hbo series every single week and we're going to be covering velma uh when that finally finishes i think and uh february uh the first two or four is esque episodes depending on what time this comes out should be out by then but we're going to wait until the series finale to cover Velma um, and we have many more to come there is, there's a lot of movies coming up so I'm very excited for and it's like as soon as February hits it's just going to be ground running with like Ant-Man and everything like that uh, uh, the knock in the cabin of the woods yes. yeah <laughs> cocaine bear <laughs> you, just, you mixed two titles which was awesome did I really yeah you did which ones? Knock at the cabin, cabin in the woods. <laughs> oh my gosh, I totally forgot. It's okay. Maybe we'll do a Godfather better. retro review. Actually, I think it's whenever the anniversary is. For Maybe Godfather we'll part one or part two? No, I think it's like the 50th. No, it was the 50th last year. Last year. I was going to go see it in theaters. My mom told me not to. <laughs> she does not like The Godfather. She's more of a Goodfellas kind of gal. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, mom. Yes. <laughs> but like my this. dad loves The Godfather, and I just haven't watched. It's this is one of my blind spots. Everyone has. Okay, I have them. Too. Well, actually, not to prolong this even more. 
Um, but I, I'm doing, I'm gonna try my best to do first time watches, like older movies that I haven't gotten to. So like my goal is to like go through people's filmographies and kind of watch that more so than- Oh, that'd, movies, be, a lot of, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do that. Like do that. Yeah, because yeah. there's, there, there's, I definitely have some. Um, Godfather is that's the only one I'm giving you guys today. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, I, I, I'm okay. To be fair, I'll say that I've never seen the Shawshank Redemption. That's a blind spot for me. Oh, I haven't seen that one either. Okay, so okay. yeah, there we go. <laughs> I give you one. Oh no, I give you another one. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> no, it's all good. But ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you all for listening. And remember, if you enjoy our show, leave us a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram to stay in the know. I'm Christian. That was Amanda signing off. And we'll see you guys in the next one.